Alright guys, so today we're going to be installing four 100 watt Renergy solar panels onto the roof of my 2020 ePro 19 FPS. Uh, I'm not an expert and I've never done solar before, but I've done a bunch of research and I wasn't able to find any videos showing how someone did it to this trailer. Um, so that's why I am making this video and hopefully you in the future can upgrade or do whatever I did better. I'm sure you'll be able to see something I did wrong, um, but this will give you an idea of how I did it and how you can possibly do it. And like I said, you can improve upon that. So, like I said, we have four rigid 100 watt panels, as you can see right here. And the reason that I went with rigid is because uh, they last longer, they were actually cheaper. And um, from everyone I have talked to, they get, they're better, or they're more efficient, I guess you could say. So for this installation, sadly, I'm gonna be have to drilling into the roof, but I have got a uh, self-leveling lap sealant. I'll have a link to everything in the description, um, which should water seal everything pretty good. And um, there is a way that you can mount solar panels without drilling into your roof. But the problem with our trailer, or the GeoPro is, is that they are rubber roofs and over time, if you just do the 3M tape, it will pull the rubber roof away um, and it will, could possibly rip off. But I called multiple companies and they all told me not to. So we're gonna be going with uh, drilling in the roof sadly today. But anyway, what I have got, I have got two five foot um, eight, gauge wires or 10 gauge wires. I've got two 10 foot, actually I think these are 15 foot um, 10 gauge wires. I have got the mounting hardware for the roof. I've got three male and three female MC4 connectors. And then I have got my adhesive tape to roll on top of the wires on the roof so they don't flap around. But now I'm gonna take you guys up on the roof and show you how I'm gonna do this. So just in case you guys couldn't see on my other shot, here's the lap sealant. It's self-leveling lap sealant. Um, there's a non-self-leveling lap sealant, which I believe is for um, like walls and stuff. I could be wrong. And then here is the mounting hardware. And now I'll take you guys up on the roof. All right, so we've got the solar panel up here. I'm putting it all the way up at the front, right next to the antenna and the Wi-Fi range extender. That's the back of the trailer, bring it all the way up here. And then I measured five and a quarter inches from the edge of this white to the bracket, to the front of this bracket right here, five and a quarter inches on each side. That way the panel is somewhat straight. And then how I'm gonna mark the panel is I got the Sharpie here and I'm gonna draw holes on every single one that way I know where the bolts are going to go. And then I'm going to take the panel off and put this self-leveling lap sealant on this little rectangle part underneath. And then put the panel on top of that. That way when I screw the bolt in, the lap sealant is underneath this bracket. Alright, so we've already had an issue. I was going to run the wires underneath here to go that way to the other panel. But since the roof is curved, it's it's super tight under here and the panel would actually been pushing down the wires. So I'm gonna run them out here to the side, kind of like right here, because there's a lot more room under here. I can fit my fingers and that way the wires don't get crushed. So just a heads up for that part. All right, so now you can see what I meant by the lap sealant, why I marked it. I put it on all four corners and I just feel like that's smart because then uh, you know the lap sealant's actually under that bracket instead of just putting it on top of around it. So now we're gonna mount the solar panel. So panel is mounted down. As you can see, that's what it's gonna look like once you screw it in. So screw it in and then put lap sealant all over the top of it. Um, one thing I'm gonna do on the next one is I'm actually gonna put more underneath because I realized I can't get behind the panel to put more lap sealant around. So next time before I put the panel on when I mark it, I'm just gonna put more lap sealant at the back end of this panel, or the back end of this mounting bracket, that way it, it oozes out that way. But other than that guys, here's the panel, and then I'm gonna install the other ones and then start wiring everything up. So I don't know how well you guys can see or not, but doing the same thing on this side. And another point thing to point out is I'm putting the the cables this way, like. The, the junction box, I guess you could call it, is right under here. That way, 
I don't have to run the wires longer. So just the simple things can help. And another thing I'm gonna do is because the roof is curved, when I screw this down, I'm actually gonna push down this bracket when I do it. And as I said last time, I'm gonna put more on the back end of the bracket underneath the panel since um, once the panel's on, I can't get under there. And then same thing, I don't want the cables to get pinched, so I'm gonna bring them out over here Probably don't need to do this much, but I uh, don't want any leaks. All right, so now we are on to the third solar panel. I'm gonna be taking this off in a little bit, but for now we got the second one here and then the first one that we put on this side. Um, something to point out. So this dish is not directly in the center of the trailer, but I realized just from the shadow it's casting right now, again, it depends how high or whatever the sun is, but um, I put it over enough so that way at least now the shade of this is not covering it. Obviously if the shade's on that side, that one's gonna be covered, but I figured um, just move it over enough so I can have it because um, I've read a lot that if your sh uh, solar panels are shaded um, mainly in parallel, it can ruin the output, but I'm gonna be running it in series. But uh, next to my AC, I have no choice. It's gonna be um, covered but um, yeah, so I just figured I'd let you guys know that. And then for here, I'm gonna put them super close, but I don't want them touching, just cause if one rattles or whatever, I don't want it rattling both together and I'd rather just have them super close. And then both these wires, again, this junction box for this one's here, this one's here. Then I'm gonna connect the wires here with an MC4 connector um, and then run it around the side. But I'm gonna mark this one up, install this one, and I'll catch you guys soon. All right, so I have got this third panel installed. I'm waiting for all the die core lap sealant to, to dry before I worry about the wires so it doesn't mess it up. Last, I'm gonna be putting my new panel over this old panel, so I gotta, well, not over it, but where it is, so I gotta take this one off. Um, and there is one, there's six screws. They're all Phillips head, at least for mine. Maybe your dealership's different, but all I'm doing is I'm just scratching the surface to get that off and then I'm gonna pull the um, the Phillips heads out. All right, so something important to note. Um, I got all the screws out and as you can see, hope you guys can see this, um, but the screws, they dipped them in, looks like die core, kind of like what I was doing over there, how I put it under the panel. Um, so anyway, that just makes me feel better knowing that the dealer did what I thought was also smart by putting it underneath and then screwing into the, um, the die core, that way it's around the screw itself. So this was a complete pain in the ass to get off. Um, I basically took a knife, there's this, this, and that. There's three rows, and then at the ends, you go through and then you gotta cut off this little black piece, but, um, that was a pain in the butt. That probably took me half an hour. And then the roof ripped right here. And I think back there. All right, so you guys are probably wondering why this looks like shit. Um, I'm a dumbass, rule number one. So I forgot that I ordered white Eternabond on Amazon, but I got that for the wires uh, to, to hold down, not thinking that I could use it for the patch. So I ran to a local RV shop and bought a turnabon, but they only had tan, put it down, and then I was like, oh shit, I have this white stuff I bought. So that's why this looks like shit. Um, I really wish I would have realized that I, I had that, um, cause then this would have looked a lot better. But it's gonna be covered by the solar panel anyway, so you won't see it, you won't really see it. But anyway, 
I ended up putting all six screws back in. You can see all the die core. Um, I put all six screws back in. I dipped them in die core and then I screwed them in and then I put die core around the top on every single one. That way um, there's something in the hole. I just, I don't know, I felt better having the screw in there even though like it's not necessarily holding anything. And then um, all I did was take the Eternabon and there was three rows of the glue or the whatever the adhesive they use going down and then going across. So um, when I pulled the panel up, it kind of pulled the rubber roof away from the wood. So what I ended up doing is just, I traced it essentially with this and just followed the line. That way you can see how it's kind of sticking up here. Um, that's, that's the glue in the roof that pulled up. So it just, I know it doesn't look the best, but this makes me feel a lot better that um, everything's covered. So now I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna install the new panel over top of this. All right, so one last thing I will say is I realized when I did the die core, it takes a while to dry. So what I recommend you guys do is wait a day until you do the wiring, because as you can see, the wires were touched all this and it kind of messed it, messed it up and it just, it looks, it would look nicer if you uh, waited. All right guys, so I'm done the install and as you guys can see, we've got two panels wired right here and they are wired together with these MC4 connectors right down here. So these two are together and then I got two 15 foot cables running all the way to, I'll call it the junction box or the box that actually enters the RV. Then we have got this 100 watt with a five foot cable running over here. And these MC4 connectors are then connecting this solar panel to the one I just showed you via five foot cables. And then I have two more five foot cables coming out of here. And then I have them going underneath and then into, like I said, I'll call it the junction box. I'm not sure the right name for it, but the 15 foot cables are a bit long, as you can see probably from the drone shot. Um, they kind of, kind of had to make them go long. But anyway, it it worked out great. Um, I, I I think 10 foot would be definitely too short, so I would say just stay with the 15 foot. Um, but as you can see, the panel cover most covered most of that tan except for this little part um but i think eventually i have 400 watts i'm gonna upgrade to 600 and i'll be able to fit another panel here which will hide this and that is also why i kept the cables tucked in as close to the ac unit um, as possible that way i can still fit another panel and then my other panel if i get another one will go here also but uh this is the setup guys um pretty sweet setup so i'm gonna hook up the charge controller battery um, eventually that'll be another video um, but for now that's all I'm gonna go over is just the installation of how I did this and then um, I'll have all the parts and accessories linked below and if you have any questions feel free to comment but other than that that should be it um, so yeah peace out